So we are seeing the, uh, the end of the ego era. And it must be replaced by the era of truth, of sat, of the real. So yogis are those who go first and lead others from the unreal to the real, from the darkness to the light. But you must be a carrier of the light. And what is the light? The light is pure awareness. The light is the presence that is inherent in you that has always been there. It's your eternal light. Everyone has an eternal light. But the problem is, once an ego was formed, you became ignorant of that light. And the light of pure awareness became identified with the mind. And you fell into the egocentric fallacy of believing that you were the character who was going through time and space, suffering traumas and feeling dependency and weakness and creating all of the sets of ego defenses and all of its uh, uh, ways of trying to find compensatory jouissance of, of feeling loved and lovable and worthy and good and all of that. And it became lost. The awareness became lost in the thinking apparatus and in the sensing apparatus and in the whole sensory realm, which was forgotten in its true nature as a dream and considered as the reality. And the awareness dreaming it was forgotten entirely. Now we must remember again, we must return to the pure presence that is unborn, the presence that you have been long before you attached your presence to the current body. And with the knowledge you have had many bodies in serial succession and that you have gone through every possible experience, now is the time to return to the self. There is nothing more to get from the world except to realize that the world is not your habitat. It is simply a dream field. And you are the master over that dream, but the mastery can only be activated when you are outside the dream, when you've awakened from the dream meaning you've awakened from your belief that you were the character in the dream. And once you awaken from that, then all of the character's attachments and all of its bondages and all of the, its uh, negredo no longer pertain to you. The instant you realize that you are not the ego and never were, and the egocentric fallacy falls away, you are in the state of perfection. The pure presence that you are does not need to be and cannot be improved upon. It is literally God, nothing less. That's what you are. All of the traditions have been telling us this for thousands of years. It's time to listen. It's time to discover through our own experimentation that the presence in its pure state, free of thought, is the portal to the absolute ecstasy and infinite intelligence and power of the real. And that this cannot be gained through any egoic maneuvers, through any efforts, through any sadhana, <clears throat> through any uh, practices, you won't become liberated from suffering no matter how good your diet is, no matter how good your medicines are, no matter how good your therapist is, no matter how good your life is, no matter uh, whatever the conditions are, you are the unconditioned self and the unconditionable self. 
And regardless of the condition of the ego, regardless of how fragile it might feel, regardless of how stupid it might feel, <clears throat> regardless of how evil or toxic or whatever it might believe itself to be, that is not you. It's simply a role that you had falsely identified with. But presence pertains only to the infinite, absolute intelligence behind the whole show, not limited to one character in the show. The entirety of the intelligence that has produced the movie, the script, and who already has established the outcome is what you are. But all of that needs to be activated, realized, and it's only realized through effortlessness because the ego wants to do something to get there. And it's only through the letting go of the ego's <clears throat> inherent <clears throat> urge, its drive to become a god or a goddess or a sage or <clears throat> a liberated being or, or just somebody who's happy and rich and uh, you know, has all the sensory gratification they want. Whatever is your goal in life, and that goal <clears throat> will not be achieved and you will not be free of suffering through whatever efforts you make. You will change the conditions of the suffering, but you won't change the suffering because suffering is inherent to the ego since the ego lacks its true essence. It lacks the ecstasy of its effortless being. And no amount of effort will get you to effortlessness. And so therefore the ego is useless as an instrument of liberation. Put it aside. Put aside the mind. <clears throat> you can't get there through thinking yourself out of the ego box. But the minute you stop thinking and you adopt pure presence as your nature again, you are out of the box and you were never in it. So nothing could be easier than achieving liberation in life, nothing. But it's too easy for the ego. That's the only problem, it's just too easy. But because you're not the ego, nothing is too easy for you. And because the portal to the real, to the absolute, is via emptiness, it is simply through realizing you are not the ego, and you're not anything that the ego could think of that gets you free. You don't need to know what you are. You don't need to have a belief. You don't need to have faith in what you are. You just have to recognize what you are not and then discover what remains. Discover what you are. Don't take my word for it. Don't take the Buddha's word for it. Don't take Ramana's word for it. You don't need to. Find out. It's right there. The reality is immediately present as soon as you realize you're not the ego. As soon as you realize that you are pure presence and allow yourself to discover what is the quality of that presence and feel the spaciousness and the energy that fills the space. And surrender to that energy without fighting it, without blocking it, without muffling it <clears throat> with thoughts or with, uh, with some kind of uh, concept. 
then. The power of the Absolute Self floods into the presence and dissolves the sanskaras of the ego once and for all. It's done. Thank you.